Joining us now by phone is the senior project manager for the museum, Zena Howard. Zena, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Tell me, wh when and how did you become involved with this project? And describe your role in particular. Sure. So um, when I became involved in this, in this project was about eight years ago in 2008. I joined the team um, leading what was at that time a pursuit. We were competing against five other architectural firms to, um, to win this project. And um, so I came on as a senior project manager with Phil Freelon as the lead um, architect. And we combined with three other architectural firms and we pursued the project and won the international design competition that uh, Smithsonian sponsored. So you've coordinated with three other firms plus key consultants. How many consultants? Uh, 31 other consultants uh, in addition to the other three architecture firms. So um, yes, leading and managing and coordinating uh, those of over the past eight years um, has been uh, quite an effort. Massive endeavor and yeah. uh, a massive accomplishment as of today. So I should say congratulations to you for the accomplishment as well. Well, thank you very much. We're all very proud, proud of the team, proud of Smithsonian, and quite frankly, very proud mostly of this country. For those who have not yet visited the museum, we, some of us may have heard that the layout involves slavery and some of the darker days of African-American history on the lower floors, and then moving progressively higher to brighter moments and greater accomplishments for African-Americans. Can you talk a little bit about whether that progression is reflected in the design of the building itself? Yes, so um, intentionally, even uh, prior to uh, the eight years that I've been on the project, for two years prior, uh, my firm did the, the sort of uh, conceptual layout of how the visitors should experience this, this um, wonderful um, culture and history. So we started off with the history gallery, and indeed, you're right, you begin by descending down. Um, you, you take a glass elevator, actually, down, and, and it sort of drops you from the 1980s down to the 1400s and progressing through uh, significant periods over that hundreds and hundreds of year history from the transatlantic slave period, Middle Passage, to colonial, colonial American through antebellum all the way up to 1968 and ending with President Barack Obama's uh, first inauguration as, as president, the first African American president. Then coming out of that, because that's a little intense, it's a little um, deep, and it's, so there's a moment of reflection that we've provided uh, design in the space. It's a contemplative court with uh, water that sort of streams down from an, um, an open skylit, what we call an oculus in the landscape, and gives you a little bit of relief from that. Then you're able to move up to the building, as, as you stated, to community, and on that level we... Uh, you get to experience African Americans' contributions to um, the military, education, politics, science, math, and then from there you proceed up. And the fourth um, and the final gallery is culture. Really, really um, great uh, expression of African American con contributions to music and art, um, visual arts, and. Um, an expression of our culture, you learn about, you know, uh, African American hair and how that has, you know, been defined over the years. And you see sports, our involvement in that. And then um, there's some really fun, fun uh, exhibits that everyone enjoys. You have um, the uh, Chuck Berry's Cadillac, wonderful red Cadillac, and um, finally, uh, George Clinton's mothership, which is which is awesome. I actually had the opportunity to take a photograph with him the other night in front of the mothership. <laughs> that was the highlight. So, do, do you have a favorite space in the museum? You know, I, I do, and I won't say. Um, yeah, I, I do. I, I like the um, there's there's areas, and you'll see up high in the museum where we've actually. Um, opened up the, 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 the skin of the building or, the, or the, that corona um, reflective uh, skin of, of paneling that you see. 
and we create vistas out um, to certain key uh, areas in this wonderful place of, of America's front yard. So there's a there's a nice panoramic view of the entire Washington Monument grounds off a fourth floor balcony. Um, through design, we refer to it as a Juliet balcony, but but it really is a space that you you get to experience the full volume of the uh, of the uh, space. You can see all the way down to the lower level. So, and then you at the same time you get to look out across the wonderful um, Washington Monument grounds, and the vistas are just um, breathtaking. So, that's what I would say is, is is one of many favorite spaces of mine. And we should all make a point to go to that specific place and experience that as you've described it. You 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 have mentioned. Um, the word America several times in your description so far. We know a few days ago the New York Times ran the full uh, text of Langston Hughes' poem, I Too Sing America. Um, mm -hmm. We understand that this museum is to affirm the beauty, the strength, the talent in the African American community and in the African American experience, but um, it sounds like you are suggesting that this museum is not just for African Americans. You're absolutely right. It was never envisioned. Um, it was never the mission of, of, of Lonnie Bunch as the you know museum director in the Smithsonian to be in a story about just African Americans because that's impossible because the African American story is the American story. So, and to, to quote Lonnie Bunch, he is always the executive director of the museum. Lonnie Bunch has always said that this is the American story told through the African-American lens. And I think when people experience that for the first time, you know, this museum is, is going to educate a lot of people who um, have may be um, ignorant about African-American culture and history and contributions. And I think once you allow yourself to be immersed in, 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 in the content and the stories of this museum, you will begin to see that there's no way the two are inextricable. There's no way to extract African American from American culture. And the climate in the country today, some have described as divided or divisive even. Um, I'm wondering, in this climate in particular, how it feels to you personally to have been part of something like this. Personally, what does it mean to you to have been part of making this monumental and historic place for all Americans? Personally, it, you know, this has truly been an amazing journey. I, I feel blessed. Um, and humbled. I'm blessed by the existence of this building and its content. I've, I'm extremely grateful for the wonderful people I've worked with and the relationships that I've built through, uh, you know, the eight years of working on this. But more so, as an African American, as a female, and as a um, a female practicing in a, in a profession that is uh, that has such a dearth of women and African American women. Um, I feel blessed to have been a, a part of it. It's been a unique experience. And, and finally, in a way, I feel like um, in, a, in America now, I, I personally, having gone through this so I know others, must feel like there's now an opportunity to really discuss, um, begin the conversation around culture and and um, and race and diversity and these are the things that are going to help in some way heal a lot of what is going on um, in what we see in, in in cities like Charlotte and and recent uprising and, and racial tensions. I think it's going to go a, lot, a long way to at least begin to to begin that conversation that can lead to healing. It certainly sounds like it has that potential. And so I say thank you again for your contribution and for speaking with us uh, here this evening. And, you know, we're wrapping up our conversation with Zena Howard, who is the Architectural Senior Project Manager with Freelon. And we're talking about the newest treasure on the mall, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Thank you again very much. Thank you.